let's talk about your piece. So I, I, you're right. This did receive a smattering of media coverage. The guy with a machete at the airport in Louisiana. Yeah, in New Orleans. Uh, but anyway, oh God, you said more than a machete. He yeah. had. And by the way, there's a title for the article. I hate the title. That wasn't my title. I fought them on it. The title is called Surprise Another Christian Terrorist. There's nothing to do with Christianity and this attack. This is, as you'll talk to many writers who will tell you, you write the article, editors write titles, and you fight over titles all the time. Right. They gave a title like this to get clicks. I'm all for clicks. I'm a click whore. I want <laughs> all the clicks I can get in my articles. I hate the title. There's nothing to do with Christianity and this attack on any level whatsoever. And yeah. normally moderate Muslims, not clickbait. So, you know, yeah. Dean has to do what he can. Muslim doesn't get clickbait. This guy, I mean, my article's point is, Look at the facts. If a Muslim man went to the airport with a machete, poison spray, and six homemade bombs yeah. in, his car, in his bag with him, six homemade Molotov cocktails, and went right to TSA and started attacking TSA officers with a poison spray and chasing him with a machete, yeah. and then they went, after they shoot and kill the guy, they go to his car, and he's got an oxygen and acetate tanks, which a simple Google search will show you those two together create a huge explosive device. So he had another explosive device in his car for whatever reason. This would be wall-to-wall terrorism content, terrorism, you know, Ted Cruz be going crazy, Bobby Jindal would be calling for me to be in a prison camp somewhere, you know, and meanwhile, this gets, it got some coverage, but a teeny amount. Yeah, his Nothing, name is... No terrorism terms his, whatsoever. His name is Richard White, 63-year-old former Army serviceman who'd long been retired living on Social Security mm -hmm. uh, and disability checks. He was reportedly a devout uh, Jehovah's Witness. Um, and he, as you write, you said that law enforcement was quick to chalk up this incident to his mental health issues. Um, it, but as you were saying, it's interesting, even his neighbors described him as a meek and kind man uh, who they'd spoken to just days before the incident. Everything seemed fine. You'd think they would have mentioned yeah. that he was mentally ill. But it's, but, it, but you're right. There articles interviewing neighbors, and not one said, well, you know, Richard, he's been crazy all his life. Or, you know, he's always been a little unstable or something. Nothing. Just really nice guy. Just talked to me the other day. Right. He's fine. You know, and so that day he could be fine, and people could have mental illness, I understand, and hide it. But these guys kind of lived near him for a while, and at least someone would have at least inferred. So it made me actually call the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, which is the one in charge of this investigation. I spoke to the man, the public affairs guy in charge. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he said to me, his name is John Fortunato, and I, I spoke to him and he said, well, we can't release any more information. Because I said, can you tell me, had he been institutionalized? Was he under the care of something? Did he have medication? He said, nothing. He said, we can't tell you that. I said, okay, I understand, under state law. I said, had he a history of visiting websites, anti-government websites, that kind of stuff. And a bunch of questions I gave him. And he just gave me this kind of boilerplate thing. We gave, we did a full investigation. Uh, he's not connected to any organization. He did this on his own. And we'll never know why he did it because he died before questioning. I'm like, well, that, that's not the end of it. You're a policeman. Yeah. It can't be like he died and we're, well, we're done. That's the end of the investigation. Yeah. Wrap it up, fellas. Yeah. You can still look at his computer, what he wrote about. And as I put in my article, the TSA has been called out by both conservatives and libertarians for invading our liberty and viewed as almost like target number one for some of these groups as a day-to-day -day depriver of our, our Fourth Amendment rights uh, our, and that they're invading our privacy and really some hateful rhetoric out there. Well, you were saying, I mean... The officers, I think there's something there. Yeah. All the usual crazies, right? Alex Jones, uh, Glenn Beck, have been, uh, all these crazy, you know, anti-TSA, uh, all this anti-TSA stuff. Rand Paul was lashed out against mm -hmm. the TSA. You're right, it's, it's a, one of those... Right, far right wing kind of uh, uh, things. So you know, just that is, you know, you and you mentioned the incident here at LAX. The guy came and shot the two uh, TSA agents. Yeah, uh, you know, and he killed one. And he was ultimately yeah. charged with terrorism because he had anti-government writings in his bag with him, and anti-TSA stuff. He was charged with terrorism months later, and it didn't even get much press. But he was charged with one count of an act of terrorism because it's violence plus a political agenda equals terrorism under federal statutes. And the funny thing is I posted online this article, some right-wing people go, well, if he didn't yell, Jesus is great, it can't be terrorism. I'm like, what are you, an idiot? What? It's nothing to do with religion. To them, because Muslims yell Allah Akbar, that makes it an inherently a terrorist attack. So if you're not yelling something about religion, it can't be terrorism. If terrorism, you could be terrorist for any political agenda you have. It doesn't have to be something to do with religion. Um, it's unreal, the comments I got.